A much needed win for the Golden State Warriors tonight as they have seven players scoring in double figures to beat the Clippers and outlast them by six on 11-30-23 day. And of course, those fellas right there had their imprints all over this basketball game. Draymond Green, 13 points, five assists, five rebounds. Stephen Curry, 26, eight and seven. And Clay Thompson with 17 of his 22 points in the second half. And we welcome everybody to Toyota Warriors Post Game Live. Chris Fuller, the Hall of Famer. NBA champ, Fessis Azili. I am Bonte Hill. And what a night for the big three. And what a night for the bench, Fezzy Fell. Big three showed up. What did I say before the game? What was the key to my what was the key to this game tonight, Bonte? 55 points. I wanted 55 points from the big three. Clay, Draymond, and Steph Curry. We got 59, so we got a bonus. This game really meant a lot to the Warriors. You could tell from the jump, Steph Curry got a technical foul on a missed call by the referee. So you could tell that they wanted this game badly, wanted to get back on the right track, did all the things right tonight. Out rebounded the Clippers. They shot seven more free throws than the Clippers. So that means they were defending without fouling. And 30 assists, nine turnovers, Mully. Come on, man. Great numbers without Andrew Wiggins, GP2, yeah. and Chris Paul. A lot of players stepped up, as you said, about the seven plays in double figures. They get 30 assists, make 15 threes, and shoot 50% from the field. That's great uh, great efficiency and great total team effort. As you said, a much-needed win after that tough loss in Sacramento. And only one turnover in the second half. They had seven overall, a big-time boost for the Golden State Warriors. But let's send it back inside the Chase Center to Fitzibuki. We are joined on 11 30 23 by 11 30 and 23. Steph Clay and Dre. First of all, guys, and throw it out there for any of you, after the Sacramento game, how important was it to bounce back and win a game tonight? I mean, it was, it was huge because it's the next game. That's how the NBA is built. Uh, obviously, it was a disappointing loss, but it, the worst thing you could do is not learn a lesson and just dwell on it and not turn the page and uh, you know protect our home court, get a win, try to carry some momentum down to L.A. on uh, Saturday. Draymond, one of the things I enjoy about you guys is the way you guys play off of each other, the way you're a game smash. Just like what we saw here in the fourth quarter with Steph's double teams, you're able to make plays out of that. You're able to find Clay. So how much fun has it been over the years playing with these guys, being able to play off of each other, the nonverbal communication, just enjoying each other's games? It's incredible uh, to play, you know, with the two greatest shooters to ever uh, touch the game of basketball. Uh, for myself, who who likes to play make, I'm, I'm lucky and blessed to play with these guys. You know, all they need is a split second. So as a screener and a passer, you just got to get those guys a split Split second to get a shot off and you know and then two of the best people that you can be around so I've been blessed and lucky in my life uh, and I'm, I'm excited and thankful to keep this thing going hey clay your fourth quarter brilliance gave Steph some rest you kind of exploded in the fourth to put the game away and let Steph rest a little bit you guys all came in together and closed it what is it about when Moody found you from his rear end you get one shot to go in and then here comes clay with two three more in a row what is it that lights the fire for you like like that. Well, you know, Bob, it only takes one. But more importantly, I didn't know it's you guys' fifth year together. I mean, when I was doing the broadcast, y'all, I didn't know how it was going to look down the line. So I'm proud of you two. I mean, the chemistry you two are building is is like us three. You know, it's going to – and I, I feel greatness to have you guys. So I'm proud of Kalena and Bob, especially. I appreciate it. You know? I love the way he said my name there, too. That's yeah, awesome. it took me a while, Kalena, but I got it now. Steph, only Clay would take an 11-30-23 yeah, and just like toss it right off the court right there. Uh, but this is the unselfishness, uh, right? Jumbotron, that's <laughs> it's supposed to be about them. They're talking about us. But that, Steph, enhance what Draymond just said. Who you guys are as people. Always sitting together on the plane. Different personalities, but you Not mesh so well. <laughs> but, I mean, what is it about the friendship of the three of you guys for the past decade plus? Oh, man, we're so we're all three different, uh, but we love the game of basketball, so we, we vibe on the competitiveness and the will to win over the years. Um, Draymond said, I think, in our in our sit down a couple years ago, like we've never asked any of us to change who we are. Um, we've all we've obviously evolved and grown over the years, but we all have a place. We we, we complement each other so well on the court, off the court. Uh, we're all unique, so it, it, it's it's just it, it meshed, and it, we felt it from from jump. But like Draymond said, be blessed to be 12 years in, all all three of us together. Like that's. That's special. That's uh, that's history right there. And Draymond, this is 
easy for you because you're just built this way, but collectively, how do you keep your edge? All the success you guys have had all these years together. I mean, are you guys just kind of having fun looking for things to motivate you? Maybe reading a few things here and there, like this person said, oh, let's come out and give it to them. Like what keeps you hunger, hungry, and how do you keep that edge? Uh, number one, I think it's the competitor within. You know, we're not competing against these other teams. Ever. We're always competing against ourselves. We feel like if, if we're good enough to beat ourselves and I don't mean that in a negative way you, know, you always hear that negatively but but if we can beat us then no one can beat us and it, it, that's a back now I'm saying that a little backwards but uh, I think you know we're, we're blessed man and like Steph just said when you look at the way the personalities mesh together we're not the same we're different so we never clash on that the way the basketball mesh together um, I think that's great and then also we understand this. We, we play in a, a what have you done for me lately, Lee? You know, uh, so you never get a chance to really relax and dwell on the past because the moment that you do, everybody's like, oh, this guy sucks. He sucks. This guy, that, the next guy sucks. He should be traded. He should be out of here. So you never really get to dwell on the past. You just got to stay in the here and now. And we want to win more championships, most importantly. So that's what keeps us going. Hey, Clay, how about coming through a couple significant injuries? Steph with the ankles and the broken hand, you know, and, and you guys are still here. You're all healthy. This team has a chance with the depth on it to do something special get through a couple hard times but to play because I know there were some dark days Clay where you're just wondering hey am I going to get back and lead the NBA in threes again am I going to get back and play with Steph and Draymond to be able to do it and play at this high level and all three of you together how special is that right now mm, I mean I appreciate these two because uh, like you said Bob those are some dark days that might have been an understatement at times but uh, to be out here and just moving around. I've missed one game this season. I plan on playing as many as I can. That's what I focus on nowadays. I'm so grateful for Steph and Draymond uh, holding it down when I was out for two and a half years. And to be back with these guys, I, I do not take that for granted. To be playing in front of these fans, to even see 11 jerseys in the crowd, it uh, still gives me chills to this day. And I just uh, I'm very grateful to be out here and feeling great and feeling healthy. Thank you. And, and Steph the longevity like this late in your career. You're still killing the game collectively all three of you this late in your career still playing so well. Do the young guys on this team kind of keep you young like what's what's kind of keeping you going and, and having you thinking about having so much success late in your career. Are you looking around at other athletes how long Tom Brady did it like the other greats like what what goes into that. No, I just love basketball and um, that's the fuel for everything. Like obviously our team's changed so much over the 12 years that we all three have been together. Um, so as long as that's the vibe in the locker room and everybody who's in there is all about winning, all about competing. Obviously, I'm going to have fun and bring joy and, um, you know, really, you know, like just live life out here on the court. Um, and as long as I can do that, then I think my body will, will kind of follow. Uh, obviously, we work hard to prepare ourselves for this because it matters that much and um, that's what's going to keep us going until the wheels fall off. All right, we're going to let you guys hey, Bob, go. Before y'all go, um, I just want to say one thing uh, to our organization. Like, this is special, man. And I never thought of 11-30-23 date. I know our organization went to bat with the league for us to get this game on this day to celebrate us. And so to Joe Laker, Peter, Raymond Ritter, uh, Kirk Laker, the guys who were in the trenches to make this game happen for us, I just want to thank them uh, because this is special, you know, and it's, I, I, I'm at a loss for words. I know you heard how awful my answer was the first time. <laughs> uh, you know, so, but this is, it, this is a special feeling, and I'm very thankful for it. So thank you to everybody from our organization who made this happen. All right. You, all you guys have joined us on broadcasts of various times. We don't want to see you with headsets on because we love watching you play. But when you're done, there's going to be statues in front of this building of all three of you guys. But it's a long way till statue time, guys. I'm about to say, well, thanks for giving us our flowers now, but we got some more work to do. <laughs> Absolutely. There you go. Sure. There you go. We appreciate Still it. writing a story. Thanks for stopping on 11-30-23 yes, and get sir. the W. Sir, sir. thanks, for yes, sir. We yep. appreciate That is Clay Thompson, Steph Curry, Draymond Green. It's a long way till statue time. They, they got, they're still at a high level. They got the win tonight. There's a friendship. There's a camaraderie. There's a basketball skill level that may not be seen for a long, long time in the NBA. And we'll break down their performance from tonight. Plus, here from the head coach of the Golden State Warriors, Steve Kerr. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be back in 60 seconds here on Toyota Warriors Post Game Live. Long way.
Jonathan, amazing game tonight. And there are a lot of reasons to be excited about a win tonight. It's 11, 30, 23 night. You go, of course, celebrating and commemorating Clay, Draymond, and Steph. You guys are playing without three of your key players and you're bouncing back from the loss the other night. When you look at this game, what was the reason for you to be excited about a win? I mean, uh, it was a tough loss the other day. And obviously, we can't just lose another one in a row. So just coming back here and winning this one, I mean, we all need it. I mean, it adds up to our wins, our record. So it was great to just go out there and win again. When I think about the fact that you guys didn't have much time to prepare to be without three players, you knew coming in that you wouldn't be without Paul and GP2, but you weren't prepared for Wiggins. That was a pregame adjustment. What does that say about your team's ability to quickly line up and get ready and say, hey, we got to face off the Clippers. We got three people down, and we're going to be able to adjust. I mean, like I always say, we good. And it's just a matter of time whenever everything just click. We actually got everybody back healthy, and then things happen again. But obviously, us knowing that we don't have certain people, our key people on the team, I mean, everybody got to step up, everybody got to stay ready. And I think that's what we did today. So you got 17 points tonight. It seemed like the game was coming easy for you. Why do you think the Clippers were a good matchup for you? I mean, I was just prepared. I feel like I'm always prepared, but I feel like after a bad game or just a tough loss, I mean, as a player, you got to adjust. And I feel like mine it was just to adjust and knowing how they're going to play me and things like that. Now, bring me back to that one play. Draymond's driving baseline. He lobs it up. Mm -hmm. You're about to come down with the slam, but you get fouled. You wanted that, didn't you? I mean, it's always a thing with me and Draymond. Once I know he just coming down the lane, they're going to help. And obviously, I'd be in the corner instead of just chasing the three. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I caught, Draymond always find me regardless. It's me or GP. He always find us. So I already knew what was going to happen. All right, you got the Clippers again coming up. Do you like this baseball series, the back and forth, being able to play a team back and forth? I mean, to me, it's actually great because they're going to adjust on base, based on what they saw over there, and then I'm going to adjust based on how they're going to play me. I mean, it's definitely good for us young players. I mean, we're not used to it. A lot of people are going to keep adjusting, but it's just a learning lesson for us and to get better. Well, great win tonight. Thank you for joining us, and go get ready. I heard you guys lifting weights, so. <laughs> Marty, I'm going home. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Night. Obviously, a good win tonight, Coach. Uh, Clay, Clay Thompson, obviously people have been talking about him underperforming, but tonight, I know he was being facetious earlier in the week when he talked about being benched, but in that group that he played with there in the fourth, he scored 12 all game, and then he scored just as much as that, just two less than that in that few minutes with that group. Would you say that you would entertain the thought of him playing with that group? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, he's, um, he's playing with that second group, um, you know, routinely. We take him out early. Uh, in the game and then bring him back so that he can help anchor the, the bench unit. Um, what I loved about Clay's game tonight is that he stayed patient through the missed shots. He had a lot of open shots that he missed early and he didn't hang his head. You know, he kept, kept the uh, energy defensively stayed with it and, and I felt like the game rewarded him um, during that flurry early in the fourth. I think he scored 10 or 12 straight points and, and uh, so that's you know that's what we need from him and you know Draymond set a, a, a great tone um, and uh, I thought uh, but the story of the game was was really the bench you know um, Brandon, uh, Dario, Corey, JK they were they were fantastic and uh, really controlled all their minutes while they were out there. It was fun to watch. Steve, how welcome, given what Clay's been dealing with, how welcome was it to see him give you 10 points in 90 seconds at a time when the lead was pushed to seven and he pushed back out to 13? Yeah, I mean, that's why he's out there with that group to, you know, to give them a score. But um, as I said, it felt like the game rewarded him for just continuing to fight and, and not not worrying about anything. Um, he kept shooting, and, the, and you know the, the ball kind of bounced his way. But um, I, I'm that's that's the clay that uh, that I that I expect really the rest of the year. I mean, he, I thought he was great in Sacramento the other night. Um, as long as he's patient and, and doesn't beat himself up, you know, and just stays with it um, and brings the energy defensively. And he's, he's a great player. Is that one of your better defensive 
uh, performances team wide of the season? It just it felt good because we didn't foul a ton. It just it felt cleaner than a lot of the the games recently. Um, you know, and, and we took care of the ball, so it's so much easier to guard when when you're not turning it over. You're you're able to set your defense over and over again. So, um, did a good job. Um, followed the game plan well. Didn't have many breakdowns, and um, you know they were playing on a back to back, so they were a little tired. So, um, I thought our guys took advantage of that and really kept the pressure on them and and stayed solid. And, Beyond just hitting shots, uh, what did you think of Kaminga's overall night? It was great. He didn't foul, you know, not one foul. Um, and he's out there guarding Kawhi and Paul George and, you know, really tough matchups and uh, used his athleticism, uh, had five rebounds in the first half, uh, dove to the rim, and then took the, the three when it was there. The, the game just felt um, – Really clean uh, to me for JK. Like it just, he kept it simple, and that's what we've been harping on. And very happy for him because um, JK is a great young guy. Um, you know, he wants this so bad, but he he gets frustrated at times, like a lot of young players. And um, things haven't gone his way lately, and he really stayed with it. So um, the, the approach paid off, and I'm really happy for him. I think you've mentioned that you'd like to see Brandon Pajemski shoot more, but what do you think about his shot choices and, and the way that he attacked? Brandon's just a winner. I mean, he makes plays out there. Um, he makes uh, every kind of little play that you may or may not notice, you know, deflections and uh, boxing out. And, you know, uh, he, he um, made a, a really good kind of double switch on the on their last time out when they, when they tried to run their, their play. Um, Brandon blew it up. Um, so he's going to be on the floor uh, late game for us, the way he recognizes um, stuff. If we need to, to keep a team from getting a three, I'm, I got Brandon on the floor now because he sees all that stuff and he anticipates. And um, he's also fearless. You know, he, he just attacks. He wants to be out there and, and uh, not afraid of anything. You mentioned before the, the lack of fouling and also taking care of the ball. How do you harness whatever it was that led that led to that for you tonight moving on you know against the Clippers again on Saturday and other games where it might not be as settled and complete great question <laughs> and I don't know what the answer is because we harp on it all the time but um, you know Ron Adams just said um, said we should have a sign that just says no buffoonery so maybe that maybe a sign that says no buffoonery I mean maybe that'll work I don't I, I just think that um, you know, I, I talked about this in preseason with you guys, like we're not the same team we were five years ago. So um, chaos doesn't pay as as much as it did back then when we could just generate pace and energy and, and extra possessions and afford to turn the ball over and take bad shots. We, we just have to be more solid with this team. And uh, hopefully we can, we can get that uh, to be a constant and not just one night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no more buffoonery. Thank you. <laughs> Took a while. Um, was it somewhat of a pleasant surprise to see the second unit play so well without Chris? I mean, because probably there had to be some question as to how they would do without him. Um, I would not call it a surprise, honestly. Um, you know, I said yesterday um, when the injury news came out, um, or when we knew these guys were going to be out, um, this team is deep. Um, this team is, um, we can play up to, to 13 guys, they, they all could be in the rotation. So you saw what Corey Joseph did out there tonight and in Sacramento. The guy's a pro. Um, he's a pure point guard. He never makes mistakes. He's really good defensively. And, uh, he, you know, the numbers don't show it, but he was, he was fantastic tonight. So, um, you know, these injuries to Gary and Chris give, and, and Wiggs tonight gave Brandon a chance. You see what he's capable of. So, um, you know, J.K. I thought had his best game of the season tonight. So you you look at all this, and it, you know we were missing three main guys, but we got we got lots of guys who can fill in and really step up and play. Thanks.
tie. What, what, what one are you thinking to use that really small lineup with Bones in that third quarter to kind of maybe get some juice going? Were you at, uh, what'd you say? What went into going to that, that really small lineup? Bones really hadn't played rotation minutes in about three weeks. I mean, just to get him in there, play really, really small, what were you looking for there? Um, just some offensive energy, some um, being able to push the ball, some shooting on the floor, and put him in a tough position, but um, just thought the game was a little too fast for Kobe tonight, so we wanted to just try to switch it up a little bit, but, um, you know, it is what it is. Ty, uh, Steph, he only, only wound up 10 to 15 shots. Uh, it seemed like the team uh, tried to focus on containing him. Uh, what were you trying to just do defensively, and, and how do you feel like you were able to execute on that in the floor tonight? Um, just try to keep him inside the three-point line, um, you know, not let him get a lot of threes off. Um, and then I thought in the second half, like we talked about before the game, we did a good job getting to the paint, finishing, you know, around the basket uh, with some tough finishes. But, you know, overall, I thought, you know, we were up, when we were up a little bit and Draymond's at the five, like when Draymond got behind us the defensively, it was tough, put a lot of pressure on our defense. And so um, that was tough to see. So we just got to, you know, be able to correct those things on Saturday when we play. Hey, Coach, back here. Uh, it seemed like Russ made some good cuts tonight, got some baskets, made some extra passes. Has that been a point of emphasis, getting him moving without the ball? Yeah, um, just put him in positions when teams are going to blitz, you know, James or PG or Kawhi, um, getting him where he's getting that backdoor cut, you know, for dunks or, or layups, and then working the baseline, you know, in that short action, which he's done a good job of too as well. Coach, over here to your, to your right. Um, I realize it's a work in progress for you uh, offensively, but uh, when you do get to where you want to be, what is your vision for like some of the key tenets of what this team is going to be uh, on the offensive end to be that dominant offense that I think people thought they would be when uh, you guys brought this group together? Yeah, I think um, last night was really the blueprint of how we want to play. Um, every night teams are going to play different defensively, so we got to understand that. But I think... Um, just being able to play together and understand, you know, the time and score, where guys need the ball on the floor, when guys haven't had a touch, you know, things like that. And then just getting better organized after makes. You know, we have three calls that we want to make, and sometimes we're, we're unorganized. And so we just got to make sure we continue to stay organized and make sure we're getting in something and not playing as much random basketball. How do you feel like Norm came out of came out of this? It was good to see him play, but he hasn't looked like himself even before he got hurt yesterday. He doesn't look like he's got gotten the normal volume that you are accustomed to seeing from a player like him. Like, where, where do you feel like he's at right now? Um, well, you know, Norm, he always wants to play. You know, regardless of the circumstances, if he can if he can give it a go, and it's up to him, he's going to try to play. And so, appreciate him trying to, you know gut that out and play tonight and I got to do a better job of just getting him involved but that's when it comes in when you know on May baskets just make sure we're calling a set and getting in something so we can kind of keep everybody involved in the game and so um, if we can't handle that then I got to do a better job of just make sure we slow it down and call call plays so we're in the right spots and right right place. What do you feel like the goal for this team is over the next week and a half 10 days uh, going into this new month of December? What's the goal? Yeah, what would you target as something that you mm. want to see accomplish in the short term? I think offensively um, is big for me. Um, just being able to get organized, getting to the right spots, getting to the right spacing, doing it hard, doing it with some pace. Like we talked about the half-court pace, and I thought tonight our half-court pace was slow. Um, I thought our calls were a little slow getting into it, so guys were out of place and having to run at different spots. And so just getting our play calls in a little earlier and understanding what we're trying to do. When you, a couple of games ago, you mentioned that with James, you were hoping that he could make those calls really, really early after um, when, he, when he would start a possession. How's that gone um, with that organization you're talking about? Yeah, like I thought – you know, yesterday I did more of that, you know, so I just got to just keep helping him along until he gets comfortable. Um, like I said, just, you know, making sure he gets comfortable is the main thing and um, just continue to keep getting better with it. It felt like when we left San Antonio, all the guys were acknowledging that this five and seven was really going to test you guys. What do you feel like you learned about this group over the last week? More so than anything, just I think tested us mentally. You know, I just think that 
um, understand that we can do it. You know, guys have fought, fought through it. You know, um, and I told you know PG, you know he played. He's been playing a lot of minutes, and so for him to you know continue to keep fighting through, you know playing 38 to 40 minutes the last five out of seven games, um, you know that's tough to do, especially when it's five and seven. You know, and so. Um, like I said, tonight he looked tired to me, you know, a few loose balls that we couldn't get to. Um, his shot was short. And so, like I said, that, that's on me just, you know, coming off a of back-to-back last night where we played 41 minutes. And so, you know, we just got to be, you know, smart about it. You know, he said he felt good physically, but just you could just see he was tired. And, um, you know, so we just got to get through Saturday. And then after that, we'll have four days off and, you know, kind of come together, work on some things we need to clean up on both sides of the basketball and go from there. Okay, here we go. Uh, Brandon, Steve Kerr obviously said that you had a great game. He was really high on how you played tonight and how you performed. Just talk about your performance, how you felt out there, and what you think about it, you know, hindsight. Yeah, I think uh, ever since the Minnesota in-season tournament game, uh, I've had the most confidence. I'm already a confident person, but just being out there for, you know, 39 minutes that night and playing against the best, I think that, you know, I can be out there with anybody, any group, and playing against any group. So me playing 31 minutes tonight, um, just on the team needed with three uh, key guys being out. So just try to pick up and fill the void as, as best as we can. And, uh, you know, we got a W. That's what matters. You trying to get up the three a little bit more often? I mean, I was open all four times, so letting it fly. Uh, Steve mentioned, like, a double switch you had late. Um, do you remember that specific play? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, I think it might have been on an inbound. I don't know. If it, uh, but he just referenced it because he mentions that you're seeing stuff even mm -hmm. defensively late. Oh, yeah. We're talking about the, the inbounds uh, pass to, to Paul. Yeah. Um, just saw it. I knew they needed a three um, at that point in the game. So me and Mo just talked it out. We switched. And, you know, we made him throw it almost to the backcourt. You mentioned that, like, what did that Minnesota game do? Yeah, it, it, you know, it put my confidence through the roof for sure. Um, playing against Anthony Edwards, one of the top upcoming uh, guys in the league, and then, you know, to follow that up, play against Shea and um, Jalen Williams, and now playing against, you know, Russ, Terrence, James, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard. Um, you know, just taking that challenge head on. I was on James Harden for most of the night, um, so you know, taking that head on. Pontus, do you look at your role a little bit differently without Chris? Because you played some with him, obviously, but uh, he's the vet on that squad, and usually he's the guy leading that group. But tonight, you were kind of doing all all over the all over the place. Yeah, I think it's whatever the game calls for. Um, me and Corey played a decent amount together. I think Corey filled that void for uh, Chris tonight. But you know, it's kind of whatever whatever the team needs, and at that point, um, you know, had eight rebounds tonight, just trying to pick up for you know GP, CP, and Wiggs being out. Kind of following up on that, what do you like about the construction and just the makeup of the second unit, the reserve players that you guys have? Yeah, I think we just don't have like a, <laughs> it sounds funny, but we don't really have a go-to score. So I think the ball moves moves more um, with that second group. And for us, the ball was swinging and that team's a great one-on-one uh, -on -one isolation defense. Um, but when you move the ball, you know, the ball moves faster than anybody out there. There was a point in the fourth quarter there where uh, Clippers closed within seven, <clears throat> and then Clay had like three straight buckets or four straight buckets, scored 10 points in like 90 seconds. Mm -hmm. What do you think of when you see something like that from one of your, one of your, one of your teammates? Yeah, I think we kind of expect that from Clay, um, but also just us recognizing that group we were playing out there against, they were kind of switching everything, so it kind of the ball was sticking a little bit. Um, but uh, we were able to get Clay some free ones, and then, you know, once he sees one goes in, he lets them fly. And, you know, he had three straight at that point. I kind of turned the momentum around. We were able to get Steph and Dre back in the game. And from there, we closed it out. When it comes to Clay, he seemed like his confidence was up out there with you guys. He was able to go off for 10, like you just said, in such a short amount of time. Does it is that a two way thing with you guys? Are you guys like really comfortable with Clay out there in that group? Is is that how that works? Yeah, I mean he's been here for you know however long, and 
his confidence never wavers. He doesn't care what anybody tells him, um, whether it's the media, whether it's uh, the coaches. He's going to keep shooting the ball. Um, you know, that's why he's in the NBA, because he can shoot the ball at a really high level. Um, but for us, we just try to keep instilling that confidence, like just keep shooting. And, you know, we probably don't even need to say it, but we say it uh, just to be a good teammate. You've you always been like a charge taker. Yeah, hundred percent. Not athletic enough to to jump in the rim. So, anytime I can try to take a charge, I try to. Is it even more in the NBA? Because you know, obviously, the athletes are even better, bigger, older. Yeah, it's hard. You got to have kind of a, a gauge on like, you know, in college you can kind of get away with moving a little bit, but you know, now with the replay, as soon as they see you move just a little bit, they're gonna, you know, challenge and review it. But I didn't, I didn't watch the the one I had against Russ. Um, but um, Trey, the ref, said I need to let him land. And I felt like if I let him land, I would be in the RA then, so it would have been a block regardless. Uh, technically, I guess a charge, but the, the offensive foul you drew on Harden, I mean, mm -hmm. how, how, you seem pretty fired. Yeah, I think um, going in, just kind of picking him up full court, making him dribble, you know, waste some energy. Um, but then, you know, just stabbing at the ball, kind of getting in his head a little bit. And, um, you know, he put a shoulder into me, and I took one. Cool. Great. Thanks, guys. Dario, this is your first season with Clay, Steph, and Draymond, and you've been able to see their greatness up front, but you were also a competitor to them for years. What was it like for you to play against them and now getting to play with them? I mean, obviously, it was really hard to play against them. They were, like, moving that ball. They were, like, playing different basketball, not that much pick and roll, mm -hmm. you know, more off ball screen, running all the time, and they were, like, really, really good at defense. <laughs> and, uh, you know, now playing with them, obviously, you can feel the spark a little bit. Obviously, you know, we start the season kind of, like, slow, so, you know, I'm looking forward. We're going to see even more greatness for them, you know, and for, for, for the team, and, you know, the other guys is going to step up, and it's going to be, like, good season for us. I want to talk about that particular lineup. It was you with JK, with Clay Thompson, and Brandon Pajemski, mm -hmm. and you and Draymond, and you all were phenomenal tonight. Mm -hmm. Being able to find your shot, being patient, ball movement was just key. What was working and clicking out there for you all? You only had seven turnovers tonight. I don't know. I think we were defensively really second half, especially on the page, you know. We tried to blitz uh, Paul George on their screens. We tried to be with uh, James Harden up to touch in the screens. So kind of knowing somebody's going to be Somebody's going to back you up, you know, especially if you are up on the touch, you know, B's going to roll, is going to play in that pocket. So if you have a guy stepping up, you know, and kind of make rotation after that, and after that, bigs need to kind of help them. So when you know that it's going to be there, it's kind of easier to play. We will play with more confidence, I think. And, you know, obviously after that, you know, offensive with, with such a talent like here, you know, something's going to open, you know, sometimes I'm going to have a good game, sometimes somebody else is going to have a good game. When you approach like that, to the games is going to be really hard to guard us. I mean, I definitely saw the blitz. That help defense was active tonight, and so I definitely know what you mean there. Taking it to the offensive side, five assists, no turnovers for you. Obviously, passing is your, you know part of your game, but you take pride in that. What is so important for you to be able to open up opportunities for your teammates? I mean, obviously, you know, they were like really, really kind of like kind of playing no no so very well on the on the on the pin downs for the clay mm. and I try to be same in that kind of pocket but I see the helps kind of coming like really 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 active on me so I try to find you know open man another side you know it's just maybe like basketball skill you know maybe just read you know that's how I like learn to play basketball so it's kind of like just you know playing with um, with the moment what defense gives you well, you definitely learned the fundamentals. Whoever coached you taught, taught you well. I want to ask one last question. You guys are about to go to the Clippers. And when you think about your back-to-backs and the previous back-to-backs that you've had this season, they haven't gone your way in terms of being able to sweep just yet. As you go to L.A., what are the things that you're going to focus on to try and get that sweep to be able to beat the Clippers twice in a row? I think we need to be active, you know, make them make them guard, you know, away pin downs, uh, you know, try to be, they're going to probably again blitz Steph and that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, be on the same page, you know, move out of the ball very well to open the kind of angles for, for Steph and, uh, you know, to don't hesitate to shoot a ball if we are open, to don't hesitate, make a dribble, make a play. I think that will be very huge for us. So, you know, 
it's going to be probably a different game. I don't know what they're going to approach with some different lineups or something, but you know, and they were back to back. So I hope it's going to be like even more interesting game for 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 the fans. And I think you know we're going to hope we're going to be a mini team. You kept it interesting tonight. Down three players, getting the win, and also bouncing back from that Kings game. Congratulations on a great Thank win. You. Thank you so much, Stefan. How? Um, what are your thoughts about the uh, the art in the room behind you there? Uh, I mean, it's special. It's kind of a reminder of how special the uh, the journey has been. It's hard to really like you know ref reflect or like uh watch the highlights and all that just because it's you know we're still in it and still trying to chase more stay competitive you know continue to evolve as as people and as, as basketball players but every once in a while you do need a reminder of how special um and legendary like you know, us three have, have, have been, you know, these 12 years, all the teammates that we've played with over the course of the, the journey. And honestly, kind of let you smile a little bit to, you know, look ahead at the challenge that's in front of us to, you know, maintain that winning kind of expectation. So it's all, all of it is, is really, really dope. Along those lines, <clears throat> Clay went off for 10 points in 90 seconds tonight. Uh, your thoughts? We needed it, and he uh, it was you know a timely run, especially how our fourth quarters have been, or how they were, or how it was in sack. So for him to you know get hot, he hit a bunch of different shots. He hit you know the, I think it was a three, then an elbow jumper, got the and one. Um, I think another layup, so it was, yeah. Uh, it's a reminder, like, again, with the way our team is built and the way teams defend us, you never know when it's going to come. And the selflessness of how we need to play, you know, when the ball is moving, it's usually going to find the right person. And I know he was, he didn't have much going before that run. and. That's Clay. Stay confident. Let the game come to you. Good things happen. It was great to see him smile. We got the crowd into it. It was it was much needed. To kind of go back to the first question and follow up behind that, you took a minute to look at the artwork. And I know you knew it was 11, 30, 23. They had things on the board there. How special is that? I mean, you kind of spoke on that. But if you can kind of elaborate on how special it is, because Steve Kerr said the same thing earlier. When you think about it and you think about those things, how special is that? Um, one seventh of the NBA's history we've been playing together. Like four banners. I know Raymond's math was phenomenal with the uh, 11, 30, 23 equals 64, six finals, four championships. Like, like I said, it's, it's special and it's. Um, just a nice, nice deep breath to appreciate what's gone into us still being, you know, in this position to be playing together and not just like a ceremonial, ceremonial or ceremonious, my grammar people. Sure. Thank you. Uh, thing, it's like we're still, you know, realistically trying to contend for a championship. So um, I'm sure we'll be a little bit more eloquent about it when we come back after our careers are over with. Um, but it's it's dope. Like 12 years doing anything with a, a certain group is it means something. That said, and considering all the math you just mentioned, when you think about the fact that you guys got a win today, Clay played the way he did. Like you said, you needed that, and you said there's a challenge ahead. Taking all of that in, is that motivation at all? Because all you've heard today, and I know you guys probably don't listen too much to it, but it's an end of an era. It's an end of an era. But we don't hear anything. Okay. Right? We're pretty much immune to any news or headlines. Sarcasm. Yeah. Um, we don't need any extra motivation because uh, we obviously know how hard we work to 
prepare ourselves. Um, you know, me being 15 years in, Clay 13, Draymond 12, like it's it's a lot of reps, it's a lot of work, and you know, there's a lot of emotional roller coaster that's gone over the years, and even this year, it's it's even harder. It's going to continue to get harder, and so yeah, I think it's. As a as a hooper and a competitor, you don't have you don't have much time to reflect. So I guess this was kind of a forced kind of moment, which is cool because um, you never like to just pat yourself on the back. That's not what we're trying to do. It's just a, you know gratitude and appreciation for sure. Steve said, you know, when it comes to limiting the fouls tonight, limiting the turnovers, putting together such a complete game. We only had seven turnovers. Yeah. So. Well, I'll be. <laughs> he said Ron Adams said you guys just need the motto of, like, no more buffoonery. Do you th Who said that? Ron Adams. Well, of course said, he did. Yeah. It's a good word choice. That's a great. <laughs> but, but does it, putting together these complete games, carrying this forward, does it come down to really just limiting the buffoonery? I mean, yeah, some of that stuff is self-inflicted. Like, in the last minute of Sacramento, I mean, winning changes the vibe immediately. And when you look at the margins of where a game can turn, where momentum can turn, where you uh, just give away possessions or free throws or whatever the case is, those sting because those are controllable. You know, it's still there's a lot of talent on both sides of the court every night. And so even if you play a perfect game in those areas, like you could still lose, they can, things can still go wrong. But when you feel like it's self-inflicted, like those, that's when you, where you lose sleep, you know, in the regular season. Um, and there are bad habits that have the potential to build into who you are as a team and will show up at the wrong times, whether it's big games throughout the year, trying to develop momentum throughout the year or in the playoffs. So all that stuff matters. We talk about it all the time. And I know I'm imagining every NBA team talks about those things because they are they impact winning so much. It's just the team that can actually execute it the most consistently will you know, be the better teams, talent aside. So it, it matters. What would you like from Kaminga tonight? Um. He's just a dog on defense, and when he's, you know, communicating and physical on the ball, using his athleticism, he can be a real disruption out there. And then offensively, we had a certain game plan based on how, you know, LA, I mean, the Clippers like to guard us, and he knocked down, you know, shots that were right there for him, ball swinging him, you know, taking the open ones. Uh, I got him in a couple pick and rolls, got got downhill. That's the type of game that, you know, he can thrive in when he's taking on an individual matchup, you know, while staying within the structure of our team defense and then offensively using his gifts to uh, to make plays. So it was – and it was efficient too. Like, it was 24 minutes and, you know, that stat line is, is beautiful. Um, Making an impact. You you won't have Gary for a while, and you know Wiggins and Chris for however long. Uh, how important is he in this stretch, particularly? You know, you mentioned it as an individual defender. Uh, huge is we our, our depth is going to be tested. You know, while those guys are out, so you know I know I only played nine minutes in Sacramento, and got to be ready for whatever you know he's called and asked to do, and he did that. So. He can plug a lot of holes defensively because he is, you know, everything I just said is his gifted defender when he's locked in and focused on taking that challenge, but you know, communicating and be with being within the the, the strategy that we're 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 doing that night. And usually, when that happens, you get rewarded on the other end too. So it was it was good to see. Uh, Steve highlighted uh, a play that Pajemski blew up, the, the, uh, a Clippers play that he blew up at the end of the game. What have you noticed about Brandon's ability to sort of do the little things and, and especially to close a game like that? If you, you, It's hard to watch a game that he's out there and not 
see what he's doing every possession on both ends because he's he's so active, smart, physical. Um, the care factor is always there. He's playing hard, so that's all you can do, especially as a rookie when you're trying to figure out where you fit. And um, it's no su surprise. I didn't even know he played 30 minutes like that. He's out, just out there flying around, taking on the challenge, playing sound basketball on both ends, and just competing. That's we've seen that from from jump, uh, from the summers when we were playing pickup to now. He, he always tries to find a way to just play winning basketball. It might not be flashy, but it it's it's productive every night. So uh, it's great to see because I mean for him, like, the way he rebounds. Uh, moves the ball, makes the easy pass. Man, he can hoop. We all know that. Steph, um, pardon if this has been asked tonight or before, but it's the first time you're getting to see the version of the Clippers team that has James and with Kawhi, with Paul. Uh, you played with and against a lot of different teams that had that top heavy star power. Like, What makes this particular one stand out um, and be unique after you play them? A lot of talent, a lot of guys that can create, can score, have been the man on respective teams throughout the years. And all three of them probably certified Hall of Famers, so you got to respect their individual talent um, and the fact that uh, any given possession, somebody can make a play. You can't, you can't get deflated if they make a spectacular play or a tough shot because that's what they all do. Um, and they present a challenge, so you have to be really locked in five-man five, five man defense. And I know they're still figuring each other out, and, you know, it's, it's hard to see what they're going to look like next 20 games, next 40 games, whatever, however that plays out. But they're tough, and you got to be you got to be locked in. Great. Thank you. Hi, Clay. Yo, uh, what do you think? First of all, the backdrop behind you. It's pretty cool. <laughs> pretty and then, cool. Uh, just how how about for you guys to come back from tough loss in Sacramento? What would it mean to, to be able to close out a Clippers team like this? It was a tough loss. Um, just felt really good to get back on track, especially after a tough one we let slip away, and uh, hopefully we build off it and go do the same thing in Los Angeles. Well, it's the second time you guys have come off a tough loss and found a way to win. You guys lost to OKC in that overtime game, came back and beat Houston tonight, come back and you beat these guys. Mm -hmm. um, what does it say about you guys as a team? Um, I we're still figuring it out, and we uh, have the ability to bounce forward. I think our history together is uh, an example of that, so it's never going to be easy. Can't win 65 games every year, unfortunately, but we can still end up with a great record at the end of the regular season as long as we don't um, continue doing the things that uh, have us with a losing record at the moment. Key point in the fourth quarter, you guys are up seven. You scored 10 points in 90 seconds. You guys are up 13. What, what was that feeling like? That felt so good. Because at times I feel like I can be pressing, you know, and. Uh, I obviously want to make every shot I take. I wish basketball was that easy, but uh, you know, I'm proud of myself, uh, even when I'm two for 12, whatever I was, not to not get discouraged. You know, I would have been very disappointed if I ended that way. Instead, I kept hunting good shots and stayed positive, and it worked out for me. It felt great. I wanted to kind of ask you about a specific play that started that stretch. Uh, ball got to Kaminga in the corner. He kind of gave you a little, like, DHO in the corner. Um, what does that show about him and kind of the way he played tonight to, and his growth to recognize that and execute it? Um, shows that he trusts me. And JK is uh, sky's the limit for his career. He can do things you can't teach, especially his ability to elevate above the rim. And his jumper looked great tonight. It was smooth and great backspin. And he took great shots, and he played very good defense on some of the best players in the world. And he's just a, it's just a joy to see him grow. Uh, sometimes we forget he's only 21 years old, and he's got so much basketball ahead of him.
You spoke about the graphic. You said it was cool. It's 11, 30, 23 days. So yourself, Steph, and Dre Day. And then you have the game that you have. It's the fourth quarter that you have. You flex on them a little bit. And you stay pretty even keel most times. So that being said, I know you said it's cool, but Steph said it's special to be able to look at something like that. Is Do you have any type of feelings like that about it? Is it special? Is it a reflecting moment? Yeah. <clears throat> no, it's definitely special. It's very rare in pro sports that you uh, get to be teammates with guys for over a decade. And we've done some pretty historic things together. I'm not satisfied, but when you're going to look, uh, when you hopefully when our careers are done, you look back on what we were able to do, you can say it's uh, one of the better trios to play in the NBA. So just to be even in that conversation with some of the greatest to ever play is uh, incredibly cool. And I'm a big basketball historian. And you know, to look at us three and think that we've uh, won championships you know, in the same um, realm as guys like Mikhail, Bird, and Parrish, or Manu, Tim, and Tony. Uh, hopefully, Steph, Clay, and Dre will uh, leave a legacy like they did. Hey, Clay, um, you got to play against these guys uh, on the Clippers uh, for the first time. Uh, you know, you see all those guys, especially you being someone who has Southern California roots. You see that team have to play against them, know the story. Like, what do you feel like stands out about them, and and like, what were your first impressions of what they look like uh, on the floor? Well, they got to be one of the more talented teams in the world, and I think they're still trying to figure it out. I mean, they all, you know, went to high school in SoCal. I played against James Harden in high school. I played with Paul George on my AU team. So it's just an honor to be playing against these guys still, and we're doing it at a high level, too, in our 30s. It's pretty special. And uh, I think they'll be a threat come playoff time. They, they got a lot of talent, and Ty Lue's got a lot of experience. Nice. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, sorry. <laughs>